John has uh, brought to my attention that um, everything that I know in my life is a lie, actually. Ev- absolutely everything. Specifically, Heim Saban was behind it all. Haim Saban is now my greatest enemy? <laughs> I, I'm, okay, we, we just spent 30 minutes talking about Haim Saban being everywhere. Uh, and he has existed all throughout history. <laughs> Dude, I thought Saban Entertainment went under in like 2006. Something happened. They because I know they lost the rights to Power Rangers. They had to, I, I don't know if they had to like sell it off or something, but like they lost the rights to it, and then suddenly it was like, oh, we're back at it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I've just got no clue because you know. It's kind of like Saban is the like flip side of the four kids, like the, yeah. the, the whole shitty childhood uh, localization coin. You know, you got four kids and Saban. <laughs> Jesus and Christ, four kids and Saban. I okay. So like the conversation started <laughs> just memeing about Kaido because because. In the Dragon Ball Z American theme song is not Chala Head Chala. International listeners, we we got the worst end of the stick for some reason. Yeah, we um, bastardized it. <laughs> but please look up the US Dragon Ball Z theme because it is a whole other experience, just like the Four Kids rap is. And because it's literally just Dragon Dragon, Rock the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. And yeah, like just over and over. Just that those those are the only lyrics with the same like uh the the this the, the opening is just the same animation wise, but they have that song instead of chala head chala. Like it's it's crazy. I don't know how I don't know why they did that, but apparently I completely forgot that the first two seasons of Dragon Ball were done by Saban, and news to me, Haim Saban is credited on, like, all the themes for all of these Saban Entertainment uh, yep. like childhood properties. Everything. Digimon, Dragon Ball, the original Funimation dub, um, what the heck else? There's, like, random ones that they're attributed to. The Power to. Rangers, oh, X-Men. Power Rangers, X-Men, Spider-Man, Spider-Man like... Dude, all of these like '90s bangers, and Saban was there the whole time. Oh man, uh, like all, all the like Marvel animation, like the the side stuff that like like the Silver Silver Surfer had a cartoon. That's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this is crazy, and, and like so, him and the co-founder are credited for all the songs, just all of them, and this is. Blowing my mind. And then on top of all this, uh, Haim Saban is, like, a major donator to, like, American politicians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, like, in crazy ways, man. Uh, like, he he's, like, a major backer of the Young Democrats of America, which um, isn't as, like, cool and hip as you'd think. It's not like, you know, AOC type Democratic Party. It's like nepotism Pete Buttigieg type Democratic yeah. Party. <laughs> and like, All you know, he, he's a backer the- of Pelosi. Um, he thinks Bernie Sanders is an anti-Semite. That's another thing. I This whole time, I thought Haim Saban was Turkish, not Israeli, <laughs> Turkish. Oh, God. The, 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 the Haim Saban rabbit hole just keeps getting deeper and deeper. I'm still on his Wikipedia page. It's crazy. It, like, why is there an ALF cartoon? Yeah, there's an ALF cartoon, and true ALF heads will know that Haim Saban <laughs> did the uh, theme song for the ALF cartoon. They did the, the like, live-action Ninja Turtles 
the next mutation yo yep. yeah dude this is and the big bad beetleborgs shout outs to that oh my god that w- i'll find it the tiktok of like uh the girl in like she's in like a pink like ski mask and she's like I, if I break into your house, like, what would you do? And she's in, like, this <laughs> skimpy outfit. And this fucking kid, like, <laughs> it's smash cuts to, like, his TikTok stitch of it. And he's like, I'll show you who the real boss is. Beetleborg. Borgatize. And I've Beetle seen this. Beetle yeah. Beetleborg. <laughs> Dude, what a classic. Dude, hold on. I, I, okay. Digimon the movie. Yeah. Th- this is going to take unfortunately long oh no um if you're american and you you were about digimon you know what's up if you're not american you have no clue what this is because it's exclusively an american movie and yeah so it, it's it's like the whole thing where like animal crossing came out in japan then it came to the u.s but the u.s version was so different they ported it back to the to japan that's literally what happened with digimon the movie because they took three <laughs> movies <laughs> and destroyed three separate digimon movies yeah destroyed the plots they had and stitched them together and then, as if that weren't sacrilegious enough, they took Angela Anaconda, this Canadian eldritch horror of an animation, yeah, and just stitched it to the beginning. It's like it's like a seven minute, eight minute sketch of of Angela Anaconda about like her going to the movie theater for this movie. She's and going like, to the movie theater to watch the Digimon movie in theaters, and like. It's on the VHS and the DVD. Like, you, it's part of the movie. You can't skip it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, uh, f- for international listeners, if you don't know, like, the Digimon, okay, like, the Digimon movie we got released in America was so bastardized. Like, so, okay, it was Digimon Adventure, the, like, uh, pilot, quote unquote. Yeah, it was, like, the pilot movie that, uh, Bandai had Mamoru Hosoda yes. animate for, like, one of the film festivals over there in Japan, like the Bandai, like, film fest or whatever. Right. And, it was and some, like, like this anime was... festival. It was, like, a promotional video. Like, oh, here's, like, you know, the new series we're working on. Here's, like, a little promo video. It's and it not was, like, really a, short a pilot because, like, it's after the fact. But, like, yeah, it's just, like, a short yeah, 30-minute tw- thing. 20-minute, 20 20-minute. 20 um... And then the second movie is Our War Game. If you've watched Summer Wars, it's literally just Summer Wars. If you've what? watched... Uh, what's the new one? Bell? Bell? <laughs> it's literally <laughs> Bell. It's also animated by Mamoru Hosada. It's lit... The, dude. Look, man, I just... It's a I good enough get, movie to do three times. I'm I down to, with it. Every couple <clears throat> years, I have to get my tickets to the, the Mamoru Hosoda R War game, like, theatrical release. Like, it's just shorter, because it, it's 40 minutes. And then, um, the, the last part of it is also, I don't, I don't remember what movie it is, but it's from, uh, it's, it's like the, the Digimon Adventure 02 one. Yes, yes. And that one is the one that they cut, like, the most content out of. Dude, To it, fit it all into, like, one showing. There is, I will post on our Discord the the one scene that is so bad that it's, like, palpable. The, the yeah. English dub of Digimon was, like, it. it's hilarious. Honestly, it's it's a work of art. Put it in a museum. But, like... It, it took the worst parts of it and 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 just made it a movie. Like there's one cut where like Davis is crying, and then uh, what what's the kid's name? J- Joan or something with a J? Something he's like, like that. But he's like, hey man, lighten up. <laughs> yeah, and then Davis is just like, yeah, okay, <laughs> and just like crazy Smash cut, cut to a scene where he's not crying. He's like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. <laughs> And that's, I, like, literally the words, like, the line in the movie. Yeah, yes. okay, I'm fine. <laughs> Verbatim. Um, Revenge of Diaboromon is a 30-minute movie. Wait. 
No. So there there was some so now we're getting into Digimon lore. Uh so after that movie, I forget there was a a, a year and I forget what year it was, but um Jetix had like the the animation block Jetix, I think it was owned by like Fox Kids. Yeah, had, it was like the thing after Fox Kids. Yeah, yeah. They were trying to like bolster up like Digi- they were trying to like hype up Digimon for like the new seasons that they had. So they went back and localized like all of the movies that never got English releases, like all of the ones That's after insane. the Digimon movie. And they just put them on like they put them on Jetix. Like they aired like once and that was it. Oh my and it's God. just so wild because I remember like each weekend they're like, oh, there's a new Digimon movie like this weekend. Like we're showing like Revenge of Diabormon. And I remember watching the English, like the English dub of it on TV. And I was like, dude, like this is so sick. Like, Oh man, that oh, that's insane. Honestly, what? okay, we're, we're getting, we're getting a little carried away. Last thing I will say though, check out the Digimon, the movie. Digimon the movie, the soundtrack. Ooh. It is so good. Straight bangers, all of them. Because, like, okay, I- I'm just going to go through it. Um, Like, it is <laughs> the only existence, the-, the only time it was ever played, not the Digimon theme, the Digi-rap. Oh, my God. Dude. I, oh my god, we should do a fucking watch party for this. Dude, a watch party of the American Digimon movie would be so hype on our I, Discord. Okay, I'll, I'll think about it, I'll think about it. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Because I have it on VHS. I'll, I oh, can do it. Shit. Uh, all Star by Smash Mouth, crazy. Rockefeller Skank, Flatboy Slim, great. The Kids in America cover by Len beautiful one week bare naked ladies the impression that i get the mighty mighty bostones all my best friends are metalheads by less than jake like this is crazy this was like pure distilled like 90s ska punk like i like we 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 talk a lot about our our friend jer ska 2 network the reason they exist and, and what they do is because of this movie. Yep. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. I've got. I I need I need to see my schedule. I need to clear my schedule. But okay. In the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, we are not a. Uh, we, we are not a. Uh, oh God. <laughs> I don't Saban even know. Entertainment podcast. <laughs> yeah, we're not a Saban Entertainment like lore podcast. But Saban, if you want to hire some people, <laughs> Paramecia Fancast brought to you by Saban Entertainment. <laughs> 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 Just, I keep thinking about it, and it gets better and better in my mind. <laughs> oh, Christ. We're Paramecia Fancast, a One Piece fancast where we review the latest chapter of One Piece and have a different One Piece related discussion every single week. My name is Franz. My name is John, and, and oh boy, all right. <laughs> I'm Saban, had nothing to do with this chapter, and thank God. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't do that. We can't. I think that's the moral of the story. Watchy's like our biggest fan. He's listening. He, th- he throws Dude, off the headset. Like, God damn it, Mr. Saban, if you're listening, I think we should have a little chat about your political action committees. You know, I I think we could, you know, meet in the middle. <laughs> I miss the old Saban who used to own Univision. <laughs> I. <laughs> We're doing chapter 1040, the world that should be. That was such a long sequitur. We are screwed on time. <laughs> oh my god. No, we, 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 we can come back. We can come back. Uh, so, d- 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 volume 11 of Germa Double Six is Ah, an emotionless excursion. Why? The book in the lab burned up, freeing the brothers. And, like, who the hell lit this on fire? I don't know. 
who lit it on fire? Because they're in the book, I believe, right? Or no, no, no. The brothers are in the book. But like, how did the book get set on fire? Question mark. I think the book setting on fire was something explicitly said to let them free. And like, Ichiji's power is fire, right? Um, Yeah. Ichiji's power is, it's so dumb. So it's not fire. It's like laser. Like, like that's his power. It his power is like laser. You're right. And then and Niji's I'm power bothered. is yeah, yeah. Niji's power is lightning. Sanji's power is inviso bill. And then Yonji's power is grapple hook. <laughs> uh, so e- 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 we've been saying that it's not Ichiji. But yeah, it kind of seems like it is, but at the same time, like yeah, like none, none of his abilities are explicitly like setting stuff on fire. Like you could say that lasers can do that. I don't know, man. Yeah, you could. I I don't know. Um, what I will say, I, I, the first thing I thought of, I'd have to go back through Whole Cake Island. But like, if Montdor gets injured, does like anything happen to the book? Or is it like, I mean, I guess this gets into a bigger discussion about devil fruits in general. Like if you, like, oh, I don't I think know what you're so, saying. Yeah. So like, okay. Uh, law does something with his room and like switches to people. Like if you knock law unconscious, like, does that undo itself? No. Right. No. I, I think law is a very peculiar case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually um, the worst one I could have chosen to. <laughs> I want to say. Big Mom might be a better example, but she might be a worse example. Yeah. Well, because um, she's been knocked out and then, like, the homies did Nothing's didn't... happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, never mind to what I was saying. But either way, <sighs> I, don't, I don't know who lit this on fire. I still don't think it's it's Ichiji and Reiju. Like, I don't right. think they would come back. Like, um, it, it feels like it could be a fake out. Yeah, my thing is, I don't know, like, I still don't know, like, I can't piece together who would want to free them and, like, to what end, or if they're even trying to free them, if that's their goal. Right, okay, I see what you're saying, like, this might be incidental. Yeah, yeah, because I I could totally see an outcome where, like, they're freed because somebody was just trying to light up the place, like, you know, the the laboratory, they didn't know that (laughs) uh, Niji and Yonji were there. And then when Niji and Yonji, like, escape, they're going to see, like, you know, whoever Who actually is. did this. And it's going to be like, oh, <laughs> oh, this is happening. Um, the last thing I'll say about this is um, reading the One Piece was literally the first thing I did in the morning. I was so dehydrated. I was still out of it. I opened this and I thought for a second that Yonji had the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know. It's- <laughs> and I, I looked at him and was like, damn, is he going to snap? And then like I knocked out for like another five minutes and then like came to and I was like, oh, new One Piece. Cool. It's li- it's literally like now reality can be whatever I desire. <laughs> my God. Oh, my God. I love Niji like still laying there and just like hand up, like looking at it. <laughs> Damn, my power really is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Niji's just deep in thought, like, why is his power laser? Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's a little too similar to Spark. Am yeah. I the copycat? <laughs> oh, God. No, but we, we start the chapter with Kaido's, like, what we now learn this chapter later on. Like, we get confirmed, and I, I don't know if anyone else was as confused with this as, as I was and we were, but, like, Kaido's, like, fire dragon body is, like, made out of flame. It's like a dragon made out of flames that he pilots like a mech, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's, it's, and, it's Susanoo. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Sasuke's Susanoo. Like, that, so Kaido's Susanoo is biting luffy's like gear five like fist and he's like oh well done you fought hard to reach this point but you cannot change the world and then 
we get Kaido flashback. It's crazy. Like, I will say, wasn't it last week where, like, it, we treated it like a crack theory that there was a dragon inside of the dragon? Yeah, because there was, like, you could see the fire version, and then there was, like, a little dragon head in the middle, but, like, it wasn't drawn with, like, distinct, it wasn't drawn with, like, distinctive enough features to be, like, Kaido. It was drawn with the same kind of, like, lava, like, oh, like, it's made of fire. So I was like, well, is, what the, f- <laughs> what the hell's going on? Dude, Oda's crazy for this, like, using negative space, yeah. like, in a manga like this is out of this world. But, but yeah, no, we, we get a flashback and just the, the craziest thing. He did it. He's only 10 years old, and Kaido's already the ultimate soldier. What? 46 years ago, Vodka Kingdom. What? Our country can't mm-hmm. stop going to war now. We have to win and loot the enemy to pay our heavenly tribute. Otherwise, the world will take away our human rights. And Kaido starts objecting, why does everyone bother to obey these celestial dragons anyway? And we we like flash forward even more. I'm enlisting you. You'll join the Navy because our country doesn't know what to do with you. Why should I be a government lapdog? In exchange for custody of Kaido, this country will receive the right to attend the next reverie. And he, like, before we move on, he just shouts out, don't use me as some political pawn. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, this is insane. Like, so Kaido was, like, just born like a prodigy fighter and like his vodka kingdom was like under the celestial dragon's rule and then they sold out kaido to the navy so that they could attend the reverie and i'm just sitting here like dog what it's like we you checked they did not show up at the reverie this yeah the first mention of the vodka kingdom is this chapter According to the wiki, I would have to go back to like that reverie volume to see, but I don't remember seeing like a vodka kingdom. <laughs> I mean, we might be wrong on this because the hold on, let me just control F real quick. No, no, nothing about some vodka kingdom, unless there were some like unnamed kingdoms, which there did seem to be. There's who did we see any stereotypical Russians at the reverie? I don't know. So if was anybody trust, got squatting, <laughs> there is a guy in a suit. Um, so if we are to take the One Piece wiki at face value, so there's like they have it listed by like Grand Line, North Blue, East Blue, South Blue, West Blue, places we don't know. None of them are, say, Vodka Kingdom, but at the end of the Unknown Region area, there are two names, uh, Potafo and Samosa, and they mm-hmm. don't explicitly seem like uh, kings, but the other thing is we do know that there are former kings, you know? Like, yeah, people yeah. who used to go to Reverie, but then stopped showing up for X, Y reason, you know? Yeah. Samosa? Hmm. Samosa could be. Cause, uh, maybe. Because, like, the the whole... I don't know. He, he looks like a Russian character. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a funny trip. Samosa's name is not revealed in the manga, but is instead revealed in the anime credits for episode 889 alongside the other monarchs unnamed in the manga. That's that's funny. really funny. So, I mean, we that that's still like up in the air. We'll see how that that reverie like stuff came up, but like the like okay, Kaido being an ultimate soldier, we don't know like he's clearly like the only ancient giant quote unquote um yeah around yeah. him like we we don't know anything before him being 10 but like i i don't know man they they found him they engineered him the the possibilities yeah, it, are endless this just has more like this just 
makes it even more important that like something so like whatever part of the one piece is on wano i'm assuming also like another part of it has to be on like elbaf with the giants because i i feel like like the world government is like like the reason they were allowed to join the reverie for selling out kaido is because they, like the they wanted to experiment on him because he's like an ancient giant like right yeah they're horny for these giants it's crazy it's it's insane we get an we get a confirmation on something that i didn't <laughs> think we would ever get like an explanation on but it's like oh kaido's escaped and it flashes his bounty at uh a cool 70 million which is like okay okay He's just starting. That's cool. He's like 14 or something. <laughs> and the Marines are like, we captured Kaido. Uh, he escaped again. He gets caught when he's hungry, apparently. This is a prison ship, not a cafeteria. Because, <laughs> like, and, and I saw this from Artur, uh, Library of Ohara. On Twitter, he posted uh, a, a screen cap of the the line that's like kind of like supposed to be the reference where like idol has been captured by the navy 18 times but he's never lost but he's been captured 18 times and this is why <laughs> yeah you find out this he he wasn't he didn't lose he just was hungry and he's like all right <laughs> you guys got food sold <laughs> what a what an asshole but uh yeah, we get to Pirate Island Fullhead which is the island that Blackbeard is currently on um and he ends up on pirate island i can only assume pirate island because whitebeard is here was the original like hideout of the rocks pirates which I would think, make sense yeah. it would make sense why blackbeard is there now being it, like obsessed with zebic and stuff but <laughs> it was probably like yeah something like you know their their main hub or like under their territory and they like went there often something at least something along those lines because you're yeah. right like the connection it it's the you, the man's obsessed with zebic of course he's gonna like go to the man's old stomping grounds and like yeah he, here we are kaido just beating the hell out of people and whitebeard just being like oh you want to be a pirate rocks wanted to meet you and then flash forward he joins the rocks pirates um and then we get like a little quick thing of like presumably big mom like calling on him we're going to god valley and whatever yeah, and then big trouble come with me right now we're going to god valley which mm, teasers again yeah and then like we flash forward again like it's it's like snap 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 yeah the he's giving us like no the more. abridged version <laughs> yeah straight up cliff notes it's crazy yeah, the rocks pirates are no more. What kind of joke is this with all the monsters they've got? Apparently, it was a sailor named Garp who did it. Nah, they just couldn't stand each other. No teamwork in that group. And then Big Mom is like, where'd you go, Kaido, you big rat? Which is interesting wording, you big rat. Um, I would, I mean, we're gonna get, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get a story of what happened at God Valley eventually, but like, I feel like the only thing missing from this flashback, and maybe missing is the wrong word, but like a thing I would still like to know is all the times Kaido has had lines where he's telling Luffy like, oh, like you can never trust a pirate. Like in the, at the end of the day, like they're so, they're always going to choose themselves. Like they'll throw you under the bus. Like he kept, he keeps saying lines like that, yeah. implying some kind of like big betrayal. We never but, consider that he's might be the betrayer. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about, it, I'm like, mm, is he the rat? And then like that's why he left. Because like I, 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 maybe it was a thing where like Zebek had like a moment of weakness, and Kaido like you know was like, um, no, nah, you're you're too weak for me, like something. Because we dude, move immediately yeah. into like Kaido on his throne talking to he already has king and queen queen with him and he's talking to the kurizumi lady and she's like oh in 10 years since that incident you've become the embodiment of might throughout human history sheer might has solved all problems uh of course it has humans are animals survival of the fittest is the law of nature and kaido's on just like yeah you're damn right about that 
and other rocks remnants will make a name for themselves too, I'm sure. Weapons are what speak loudest in the world we live in, and I've got a deal you'll want to hear about, which is like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's crazy suspicious, and it's like, did she do that? Like, we know nothing about this uh, Kurozumi lady, and, you know, yeah, Kaido was the one who killed her, etc. She was there for Orochi, but, like, was it really only, like, the the motivation of, like, having the Kozuki clan get burnt down? Or, like, did, did she have something else? Like, is she a plant? Is she a plant? Yeah, it makes me think that, like, was there more to this whole, like, weapons manufacturing thing than, like, is there something more to that than just, uh, like, what... Like, you know, Kaido selling it to, like, the underground? Like, is it... Because, like, we know that there was some... I mean, I don't know if he's even gonna touch on it, but I remember in Dressrosa, the revolutionary army was like, oh, like, they're getting weapons with, like, this drunken ore, like, metal, and we gotta track down where they've come from. And it was sort of implied that, like, well, because he got them from the underground, it was like, oh, Kaido, like, they're supplied from Wano, so that ore, like, exists in Wano, but I'm like, is there something about, like, I, I, is there something deeper for her than just, like, the Kurizumis ruling again or something, you know? Right, yeah. That's what I really, really want to know. But, you know, it, we'll find out later. Yeah. What we do see, though, is immediately after this conversation, Kaido addressing the Beast Pirates we're going to take all of these pampered, noble-born rulers and drag them off their ivory thrones down to the battlefield with us. That's what I call equality and freedom. A world where only war decides a man's true worth. And dude, this is some straight-up Senator Armstrong-type, like, yep. hyper-libertarianism shit. Do ya? Do you finally mean it, Jack? <laughs> like, oh God, yeah, no, it's it's truly like he is Senator Armstrong right now. Like, war economy is is best economy, and it just like it is the great equalizer. Like, yeah, survival of the fittest, this and that. Like, what well, we had talked about it, you and I, but I'm I'm getting this feeling of like. Oda's trying to promote the idea of that the same way the admirals in the Marines have their own independent ideas of justice and their personal justice. I yeah. feel like in some way, like all these big name pirates, Yonko, Roger, etc., they have their own views of freedom and their own definitions of these things. So here we see, like, Kaido defining his freedom as, like, you know, survival of the fittest. Like, there, there's no such thing as someone ruling for no reason. They rule because they're strong. And that is what leads towards freedom, you know? Yeah. Like, freedom through war. And then you had mentioned before recording that, like, big moms, like, yeah. freedom through, like, freedom through, like, family, I guess? Like, having, like... Yeah, like she she's all about like she she has like the most corrupted vision of like no borders in this world. Yeah. But and, and so like her freedom is like a a freedom away from like uh let's say racial prejudice and yeah. like you know a freedom away from nations, but it is still like a freedom under the authoritarian rule of Big Mom. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, like, whether we, the viewer, the reader, think that these freedoms are valid definitions of freedoms, it, that, that's like a whole separate question. Like, I think that it seems to be, it seems to me that Oda is trying to show us that, like, this is what these characters personally think. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's it's cool to see. I like finally getting to see like, you know, Kaido's side of this whole thing. Because I I don't know. We we I mean we we knew you know 
Oda did a good job of like even though we didn't get the flashback until now like setting up Kaido's character but I feel like the flashback just gives us like just enough more of of his thought process and stuff it's like oh okay okay like I'm I'm, I'm starting to get it now I but, like uh, I don't know it, it, it's interesting I think it makes like oh, Oda's weird about writing characters like one piece is so breakneck pace that like we don't get time to breathe and define characters outside of this like very textual way you know yeah it's um yeah, I think the days of, uh, you know, especially with us being, like, in the end game, like, the days of getting, you know, I mean, we'll get long flashbacks for, like, the really, like, you know, the I'm assuming, like, the Void Century flashback and stuff is gonna be, like, huge, but, uh, I think I, 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 sad and I guess in a way kind of cool with it, like, gone are the days of, like, a big flashback for like just some random like you know like oh i guess kaido's not a random but <laughs> damn yeah, just some what random schmuck dude yeah so who kaido lido <laughs> no but no i kaido continues with, with we get out of the flashback and then we go back to it at the end of the chapter but an interesting thing happens right now right when we cut out because he says i wonder where that kid heard it Yamato dropped Joy Boy's name, and King is like, yo, what? And Kaido tells King, if he's the same man you're waiting for, King, then I think I know who Joy Boy is. And King is like, yeah, who is he? Apparently, Odin's desire to open the country is meant to welcome Joy Boy. And, like, we, we cut back to the present, and like, you know, all everything that's going on with the fights and stuff, but, like, oh. What a what a thing to leave us on, <laughs> and like, dude. Speaking of leaving, the yeah. the last guy from CP zero that was unaccounted for, because we had a uh, pack E derm, and um, I just realized that all these nicknames are like prohibitive for people coming in, <laughs> just listening for the first time. the The guy with the face sign, yeah, the guy whose mask was on a stick. Is Pack E Derm from Yoshi's story. Um And the Go guy. The Go guy, because he was constantly playing Go on the board. And then this guy, who I think we called Buckethead. Yeah, because yeah, he yeah. Looks that's like what it was. Guitarist Buckethead. <laughs> yeah, Buckethead here's just leaving. Like <laughs> he's, he's piecing gone. the fuck out. And like a lot of people online are saying like this is how Morgan's finds out about this. Cause this guy goes to Stussy and Stussy's like, Hey Morgan, I found out about your funny little rubber boy. Turns out yep. he's God. Turns hey, your funny little rubber boy is actually a, a holy deity. But oh man, yeah, he's just piecing out. I, th- for me, this is also like, oh yes, this is gonna be a lead up to like I have no doubt in my mind he's going to tell the Navy to be like, yo, like, this fight's about to be over. Move the hell in. Like, <laughs> I, like, you know, because, okay, we, we had talked about Wano getting Buster called, but all the examples of Buster calls we had seen were kind of like prepared things because the yeah. Buster call on Ohara, they were around the corner. And the Buster call on Impel Down, and, and the 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 whole area, not not Impel Down, you, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that was literally like Navy headquarters. <laughs> and so, I wonder if we get like some difference in response time. If it were to happen, we get like a delay in response time, and that's like. The one week that it takes for uh, yeah. Luffy to recover, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I could see that because like I I could see that because all of the all the navies like they're all split right now. Like okay, there's ships outside of Wano, but like what ha- like they sent a fleet to every single island that a warlord was on to capture them. And I mean, look, I can only speak for Mihawks, but I read that page and I saw that episode like 
that whole fleet is done. Like, they better have had Kizaru or somebody in that fleet, because he is killing all of them. Yeah. Oh, man. So, like, uh, but they're, like, spread so thin, because I'm like, okay, well, even if they have one, you know, that that's seven warlords that they had to send an entire fleet after to capture each individual one. Green Bull's the only one available, right? Yeah, I don't know where, last we saw Fujitor, I mean, he was talking about the new weapon that Vegapunk made to, like, that'll replace the the warlord system but i don't know like where he is i'm assuming he's with vegapunk yeah 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 i'm pretty or sure he's that's... Ne- he's with or near vegapunk and we also know that that smoker and tashigi are with vegapunk right or they were with vegapunk because they were going to have vegapunk help to like try to cure the kids right 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 right, right. so hujitor is there kizaru gone akainu like busy um yeah no it's literally just green bull so introduction yeah oh hopefully and i know green green bull oh there was a theory i read that was kind of crazy but i was like oh that would be kind of weird but cool if it works because there's always been the one that like the silhouette of Green Bull looked like this actor who had like the same kind of poofy hair in the same shape. And the movie they were in was like uh this I think it was like this woman who was like a samurai hunter. Like she she hunted samurai to get like it was like a like a revenge sort of thing. Huh. Um there was that, but then also I saw and I mean, okay, it was like you know crack theory take it with a grain of salt but uh somebody was saying that maybe green bull is the shimotsuki guy from the prison that yamato was in the original like uh daimyo of his region oh because like he was saying like oh like uh in the prison with yamato he told yamato like, he said to him, like, oh, like, a samurai, like, doesn't need to eat or something like that. Sure, yeah. And Green, and then Bull, Green Bull is like, like, oh, yeah, I haven't eaten in, like, a year. I only eat when, like, beautiful women do me. Um, but then also it would, the, the other part of it was like, well, it would make sense because if it was him, he would have green hair. And then that would, like, you know, the epithet <laughs> Green Bull. True. Again, it's it's super, like... It's, Those it's are the a little only connections, there. yeah. But it's like if you if you think about it, it's like oh that that'd be pretty cool if it if it did work out that way. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I like. I feel like it would be a little more talked about, like oh the admiral from Wano, but like you know who knows who knows. Yeah, yeah. I also feel like if it was him, it would kind of uh, it would kind of mess up a lot of stuff with like. <laughs> I don't know, because you, you, they're like all, like, Akainu went on and on about, like, oh, like, Wano hasn't, has been cut off from the entire world, like, for, like, years, and right. it's like, dog, if Green Bull was from Wano, you'd be like, yo, just go home, dog, like, just... <laughs> yeah, take care of it, dude, come on. But, um, yeah, no, like, th- this motherfucker leaves, and M- Momo, well, Yamato's trying to cheer Momo up. Momo's all, yeah, come forth, flame clouds, do as I command. And we still, we, we get, like, some more views of people laughing and having a good time, quote unquote. And the final, like, bit of everyone being flushed out finally happens. Yeah. Because we get the, oh my god, the little Kappa boy. Oh, um, Kamamatsu. Yeah. He's sitting there and just like, oh, what's that sound? And, you know, the this whole thing, again, save everyone, water of Zoe. Brooke, Robin, they're drowning. They're, they're. Yeah. I love Brooke. Like, Robin. Um, a bunch of beasts. Which is like, even worse for him because he doesn't have lungs. So he doesn't get to drown. He just. Oh, no. <laughs> He just gets to exist on the ocean floor like Jack does. But he's a skeleton, so no one will find him. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> it like Brooks fruit is actually the best. <laughs> he is just dude. He he one v one big mom walked away from it no problem. Yep. Uh, but oh yeah, it's God. it's them. We get some of the the musketeers. You know, Law's crew. They're they're getting flushed out. Jinji Vitus Apu is also getting flushed out. Law himself. And then yeah. the rest of the Beast Pirates, it finally hits the performance floor. Dude, poor Usopp just grasping on firmly yeah. to Kinemon and Kiku. And I love, you can see little Jeffrey curled up in the corner. And <laughs> <laughs> Nami's like, water? Dude, Nami's gonna have to, because like, Chopper has a fruit, Ama has a fruit. Yeah. Like, it's so funny that i i kind of love that like water is the the thing that ruins everything in one piece like it's yep. everyone's weakness it's so funny to me i love it it's so good i also really love can we just i the way nami is holding tama i'm just like like just just to protect her like oh i love nami protect the baby <laughs> protect the baby Dude. uh Sanji's protecting the girl, the the girls that saved him, and also like the little mouse is still in his hair. Frankie then, still has Zoro's corpse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frankie still has Zoro's corpse. Everyone's getting washed away, and then we cut to the treasure repository, and it's Denjiro being like, "You've been so brave and strong for all these many years, Lady Hiori." As like Orochi's head is on fire. And she's just, like, remembering, like, when Denjiro found her and, like, crying after all those years. Dude, how could we like, forget, like, the, that, the, the, they have, like, an importance together. There is, yeah. like, you know, this connection between them. Yeah, because he was the one, like, she thought that she was, like, all alone. Yeah. And she went into, like, the courtesan thing and hiding, and when he found her, he was, like so ha he was like no like uh, after all these years like i found you like it it's just like this feels a little more fitting now that like <clears throat> i'm being a little reminded of it yeah i i am still pro i i'm still on team hyori should have killed him cut him down stabbed him but i'm not as bothered i'm not as bothered a little bit still just not yeah, as yeah. bothered no i totally get you um, I would have liked her to have ripped off his fingernails in brutal det detail, animated on my manga page, but Jesus. this will have to suffice. <laughs> Kaiji over here. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, so everything is like, like, blowing up, it's reaching its, like, fever pitch, and they're like, does it feel like the island's falling? And this is where you know that it's happening. Yamato, he says, the flame clouds disappeared. We're going down. Oni Onigashima is going to fall. And, like, flame clouds disappearing was, like, that was the moment. They were like, okay, like, if Kaido loses, the flame clouds are going to disappear. We're going to drop. And sure enough, Kaido's Susano is biting Luffy's fist. And he's like, what kind of world can you create, Straw Hat? And Luffy just answers, like, as the double page spread goes on, like, I'll make a world where my friends can eat as much food as they want, and, like, just punches the shit, like, breaks through the Susano's mouth, punches Kaido's face with, like, the Ryo, and he just, like, s like m finally manages to punch and, like, slam Kaido down into the ground. It's so satisfying to see the this whole thing. Like, yeah, Momo, like, makes the clouds and gets him out of the way and, and, and you know, moves Onigashima. Cool, 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 cool. Whatever. Big fist. Yeah, cool, cool. Hit Dargan. Dargan gets, like, sp he just spirals down, and, like, dude, he, like, hits mock speed straight to the ground. 
Yeah, like the after image, like it shows Kaido falling down and then just like a Dragon Ball after image and then just crash into the crowd. And like the piece de, res- piece de resistance, the man left a fucking like coil hole, like a cartoon character. Yep. Oh, it's so good. And we get... He falls through the, like, coiled hole in the ground, and as he's falling and, like, bleeding out his mouth, we get, King, I think I know who Joy Boy is. And then, who is he? He's the man who shows up to beat me in the future. And as he's falling down the hole, we get King smirking, and just, in that case, I suppose we'll never see him. (laughs) Dude, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll we'll open that can of the worms like right when we finish. But uh, it, it's it's interesting for that to be said. Now, yeah, the last page is Onigashima slowing down and making its landing, and we we get three more balloons that like we can read clearly. You know the the I want to see mommy balloon. Starts making its way up. Yeah. And then we get two more. Beat the scary dragon. Bring the Kozuki clan back. Momo is exhausted out of his mind. He just slumps down. Good dragon. Uh, Luffy is falling down. Head first. Frown upside down. His smile. I hate you. (laughs) Turn that frown upside down. <laughs> hey, he, he won. So it's a joyous occasion. Joy boy, joy boy. <laughs> joy boy. <laughs> uh, it's cra- I'm so glad we're finally fucking done. Yeah, yeah. I feel like now that like it's now that like the fight with Kaido is over. I I just am so interested at, like, what's next. Because I've seen so many people online talking about, like, oh, like, Wano is done. Like, once Kaido's going to be defeated in, like, a couple chapters, and then, like, Wano itself is done. And I'm just like, I for me, there's too much, there's too much, like, story things that haven't been tied up in regards to Wano that, like, I can't see it just ending. Like, I can't see them just doing going into the Dressrosa post-game after this, you know? Like, there's no way. <laughs> I I think Kaido's missing but a also, horn now. Like, oh, sh- I he just is. realized. Yeah, right? He is. Oh, shoot. Dude. Sorry, I did not mean crazy. to interrupt. I just thought it was a, a bit of a big deal. No, that's huge. Luffy snapped one of his horns off. <laughs> Damn, he said, give me that. Oh, dude, he matches the skull now. No, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Yeah, no, no. All that to say is, like, I'm excited to see what comes next after this because, like, I still don't think that we're... I'll be very surprised if it's just like, oh, yeah, we're done with Wano. Like, we're just going to wrap up, like, in two chapters and then we're off to the next island. I don't think it's like it's gonna be that sim simple, you know. I mean, even um, Alabasta, it was like what, like three, five chapters where um, they just kind of chilled in it. Yeah, yeah, they had like a couple chapters of them like hanging out in the palace and like doing shit with Vivi and like getting food and eating and the the whole like hot springs thing and yeah, so like. What what I don't get is why people wouldn't see us get that again. Yeah. No, I, I think people see us getting that again, or at least I hope they do. But I see people saying, like, oh, like, as soon as Kaido's defeated, like, right now, like, literally three more chapters, and then we're, like, gone. Like, we just sail out of Wano, and that's that. I'm like, I don't, I don't, th- like, I, I'd be fine with it, I guess, but, like, Actually, no, I wouldn't. I lied. I'm thinking about it. Like, there's way too much stuff. Like, yeah, like, like, because there's no way that, like, there's no way with the navy surrounding Wano and like 
Odin's dream of like opening up the borders. There's no way that Luffy's gonna be like, well, like the borders are open. He got his dream. Like, no, okay, peace out, goodbye. It's, it's, yeah, it's your fault. Whatever happens next, like, no, they're gonna fight the Navy, especially because like now we get to finally learn the lore. Hopefully, like, yeah, we hopefully get to get some poneglyphs read to us, Robin. <laughs> we're like, we're, there's just like too many loose ends. I was yeah. right. I think it's literally five chapters at the end of um, at the end of Alabasta. Alabasta. Yeah, like I yeah, because like there's there's so much. I mean, nobody's even seen Momonosuke in his like human form yet. Like I and like I don't think that's gonna be a thing where like yeah, we can't skip just, over that. I don't think they just see him on their way out like that. Like I feel like that reveal has to be part of, like, a bigger story yeah, part. Yeah, some boy oy 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 yeah. Wow. Woo. You know? Yeah, so I... I don't know. I mean, like, I, I understand there is, like, some... As, like, if you're a week-to-week reader, because of the pace that Wano has been, I understand the, the, the desire to just be like, please, let's finish. Like, I, I kind of do get that. Reading oh, week yeah, yeah, to for week sure, for sure. has been kind of crazy. I definitely respect and understand people who say, like, no, nah, I'm just going to wait for the arc to finish. Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Because, like... I, I, again, like we've said, like, I feel like reading Wano, like, binge style versus week to week is probably drastically different. And, and we're... Honestly, like, John, you and I, like, uh, shit, how many chapters is that? Because, like, next week is a break week. Yeah. When did Wano start? It started, like, didn't it start, like, started, like, 900? Or, like, 900 something. Shoot. Yeah, because chapter, chapter 900 was the Sunny, like, dying. Yeah, so here we... St- Quote unquote. The wiki says nine oh nine. Nine oh nine is the start of one, right? Because they they're saying like reverie, yeah, reverie doesn't count. So they're saying nine oh nine. That is a hundred and forty chapters. Okay. Do you think we could do that by next week? That can probably be done by next week. All right. All right. We'll we'll do a a retrospective. You know, yeah. We'll do a Wano retrospective Shit, to, to like, celebrate Kaido's ass beaten. Kaguya-sama, though. The Kaguya-sama. Because that's 200 yeah. chapters. You know, I got a lot of reading to do, man. I don't know. Dude, I still have to finish Fire Force. I'm working through it, but I just... With the, with the move and everything, I couldn't... I haven't been able to, like, catch and up. And here I am giving us homework. Hey, what is good homework? <laughs> yeah, like, well... We'll see how it stands up, you know. Yeah. Now that you know, I I don't know about you, but I'm confident to say this is over. Oh man, yeah. Like I, yeah, I yeah. Okay, I I guess I should clarify. Like this part of Wano is over, yeah. and maybe maybe on like a technical level, it's not going to be considered Wano. The fight with the Navy for right like the country of wano but i feel like that is like the direct next thing that's gonna happen yeah we're not gonna get too much of a break i don't feel like we're still gonna get you know the five chapters of like what happened after you know the the, it's a political void like you can't just (laughs) yeah leave it like that and oda's not the kind of person to do that yeah like when we when we leave the country it's going to be in like a you know, in a in a in a place where they're able to like rebuild again, and like you know, they've the, the the problems have mostly been solved. But it's like, dude, you you got like people who've eaten smile fruits that have that need to be cured. You you got like an entire fucking system of like people enslaved in factories, factories that need to get destroyed. Like people who need to know that they're free. People who need to be cured. Yeah. 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 There's a lot and it's to be done. Yeah. I mean, and I definitely 
they got to like dismantle I said, I, like I, all the political systems within like each individual town, you know? Yeah. And I feel I I do feel I feel like that is going to be part of like the next like I guess the next act of Wano or whatever right. cuz I'm I'm assuming act 3 like now that this happened I'm assuming act 3 might end like you know the next couple weeks or so right yeah or the next couple chapters exactly I wonder if we'll get our like babang and then like a close I I feel like we need that yeah yeah cuz like holy shit it's it's we've been in act 3 for so long <laughs> now how do you feel about Okay, we we had talked about this before, and we were kind of memeing, but like, do you think based on on Kaido's like the 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 strongest should lead mentality? Do how how do Kaido respect Luffy? <laughs> if Kaido wake up, how do Kaido respect Luffy? Right, like what what's gonna happen? Like you know, Big Mom's like still like pissed about the whole thing, but like. Luffy never really cared about that. And so, like, uh, a lot of people didn't like the, the like, slapsticking of, of Big Mom, even though she still proved herself to be an incredibly scary adversary. But, like, yeah. I, I, I just She don't harnessed know. the Looney Tune powers before Luffy did. True, yeah. Dude, she's the moon goddess? <laughs> the moon goddess i don't know oh my god like yeah i i don't know how kaido because like i mean this is also like closure for kaido like he got what he wanted he got a fight that pushed him to his absolute limits that wasn't like interrupted or like like he got a fair and square fight that he lost and for me it's like how on earth is he gonna process that now because like yeah like I I don't know. Everything we know about Kaido can change from here on out. Very genuinely. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be interested. I don't think he's going to be like, you know, super like, oh, we're B we're BFFs now. Yeah, for sure. No, no, no. But like I totally could see him like helping in some way, you know? Yeah, like if like, this it, like, marine thing happens and whatever and like uh, you you know the, they they come for Wano like yeah Kaido I could see him helps? acknowledging Luffy as Joy Boy right not being happy and about like, it but acknowledging yeah it. yeah and like fighting like because I mean King was waiting for Joy Boy so whatever revelation King has about all this with the Lunarians but like I could see Kaido like just just straight up going against the Navy just like all right fuck it like. Because, like, <laughs> like, especially in that aspect, like, it's the enemy of my enemy. Yeah. So, like, if those events come to pass, I can see them fighting side by side. Yeah. Like, we, which would make, it would make some sense because they're, they're both, like, straight out of recovery. They're not going to be at 100%. But, like, these two crazy fight monsters, you know, even if they're at 20%. It's the both of them. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It, it feels weird saying that, like, Kaido and Luffy could potentially fight side by side. But, I, yeah, I think the, the whole caveat to this is, like, <clears throat> I think they're not going to be friends about it. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be like, a, oh, like, I'm going to take out the Navy, says Kaido, as, like, you know they're chasing after Luffy, and it's it's gonna be like he's not doing it because they're chasing after Luffy. He's doing it because like no, I'm like I'm gonna destroy you. Yeah, because you got in my way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, man. This is crazy. This this is crazy. Yeah, it's it's. And I mean, look, I don't want to jinx nothing, but uh, I'm thinking next chapter we might get the. The Oda box of, you know, Luffy versus Kaido. Like, Luffy is the winner. Dude, please. No more. Yeah. Like, I, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, I'm loving it. But also, I'm full. Yeah, also, I'm full. Look, all I know is I've been wanting to make a video on this subject. Um, The closer we get to the Marines, 
coming to Wano, the closer we get to a specific Vegapunk theory that our friend Billy has coming true. And like, oh man, me and Billy have this theory about Vegapunk that I want to make a video about so badly because <laughs> it's just, it's so funny, but also like, look, I, I will storyboard, like, I'm already starting to work on, like, a storyboard for the video. Like, it's going to be not super, super long, but, like, it, let me just say our friend Billy, his words on uh, this theory. Um, and I quote, if this theory comes true, I will stop reading One Piece because I know what the One Piece <laughs> is. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Like, I already know how Billy characterizes uh vegapunk in his head and like yep <laughs> you know I, I haven't been online often like oh, dude i oh yeah i don't we, have, have we, we need told a talk you shop. Or... i i don't know yeah. <laughs> M- maybe you we might have told you i'm pretty sure we talked about it at some point but uh it's funny that's all I, that's it's funny and i can see it happening especially after recent events dude i'm <sighs> I'm exhausted. We're, <laughs> we're we're done. We're done. It's yeah, crazy. We're done. We're, we're done. How crazy we're, we're is it that we're past chapter a thousand and we're just finished with Wano and we still have like three years of One Piece left? Yeah, yeah. This is insane. Oh man, it's dude. I'm speechless. <laughs> Could you imagine if Oda doesn't retire after this? <laughs> Two piece, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, please, please play us out. Oh God, that is gonna wrap it up for us this week. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media. We are at Paramecia Cast on Twitter, Paramecia Fancast everywhere else. Um, episodes go up every single week on ParamesiaFancast.libsyn.com, our hosting site. And as soon as they're uploaded, there. Um, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, all the major uh, podcast listeners, um, they are sent there immediately. Uh, episodes also <laughs> go up every single week on YouTube. Please subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't already and leave a like and a comment on the most recent episodes that come out. We are at like almost 260 subscribers, which oh, is- shit. Yeah, we, we said before, like YouTube and the Spotify and like- iTunes and like the actual podcast uh landscapes are completely different. So we're picking up some traction on YouTube, but like I feel like with the videos that we'll make and and other stuff to put on the on the YouTube channel, it'll pick up even more, but even so as of right now, it's like okay, we're picking up speed. We're we're getting subscribers at a pretty steady rate, so that's good. Wow. I do should we plug the website? Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, we can, and everyone can see the growth. Everyone can see our journey. <laughs> so, have you ever, dear listener, have you ever sat through our actionables at the end of the podcast and wondered, wow, why do they say everything? Why do they not have like one place where everything is? <laughs> Do I have the product for you? Go to paramecia.neocities.org. That is paramecia, you know how to spell that, dot neocities, N-E-O-C-I-T-I-E-S dot org. And all the links to our social media will be right there. That That's our new website. <laughs> we have the link to our Discord there. Great community. You know, we'll update it with stuff you'll you'll see what i mean <laughs> yeah if, if you follow any of the actionables go go to our website right now and just witness <laughs> i i worked just, hard okay <laughs> yeah just witness it is glorious i'm trying my best <laughs> um crack theory crack theory crack theory um Crack theory. Oh. King is the next straw hat. <laughs> <laughs> On- honestly, fight me. I- I'm just right. This isn't even crack theory. This is a real theory. <laughs> They're ready. They're ready. They have the boxing gloves on. 
<laughs> who's stepping up? Lunarians who's fighting back. Like they seem to worship Joy Boy. There's something about Joy Boy. Come on. See, we all thought that it was going to be Yamato for Straw Hats. We did not know that King has money in the bank and is cashing <laughs> it in. <laughs> King won money in the bank because he can fly. He doesn't <laughs> need a ladder. Oh my god, Yamato's Jordan. And by god, is King with the money oh, in the bank. Oh, 